Hey folks, welcome to another live, yes, live, straight from the Kinetic Cycle Coaching Studio. How are you? I'm Coach Scott and I've been a coach for over 30 years and I'm going to bring you not only a live interactive coaching session, but I may also bring you a little bit of uh, dad humour, a little bit of adult humour, a little bit of Scottish humour. So please, if you're of the faint hearted, then please. Open your ears because I speak rather fast, but I've also got great content to share with you. I've got to change your life. Some of you, maybe this is the first time you've been on the channel. Yes, I promise you now. I may change your life, may give you a different aspect of your cycling fitness, your performance, how you deliver your training sessions. And I'm going to link it today to your very own personality. The thing that you probably think is your gift your will to push yourself, your pain threshold and how high it is compared to everybody else on the planet, your commitment, your discipline, your consistency, they all tick those boxes. But there may be a couple of things that are going wrong from the very thing that you think is pushing you forward. Hey, if you're new and this is your first time, I would say the term virgin, but you're not allowed to say that on YouTube anymore. It offends people. And in Scotland, we have a hate crime for fucking everything, okay? Now, so, I promise not to offend you. If I do offend you, it is by pure accident, please. And, uh, yeah, it's not meant, okay? I'm just cleaning my glasses because I'm having trouble seeing you. <laughs> it's been a long day, a long weekend. We had Storm Kathleen, uh, Cathy, as we say in Scotland, fly over us at the weekend, but it hung about for a couple of days, so it was a real pisser. Anyway, there you go. However, that allowed me to do a little demonstration of how riding into a wind is very similar to erg mode that many of you have on your indoor machines. As an experienced biomechanic and bike fitter, I know the terminology of, well, I know how some people then get a little bit confused with erg mode and how it feels unnatural. Get inside my school community and I'm gonna be sharing a video on how that matters to you and a couple of ways that you can fix that, not just by changing your velocity, of course that's the easy way, something else you can do to your workouts that will make it a little bit easier, and I don't mean just turning off erg. How do I get into school, coach? It sounds fantastic. Scan that code and you'll get into my free community. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, you can just pause the video, rewind and scan that QR code, because I speak at the speed of what we call a Scottish Springer Spaniel. Right. Anyway, how is everybody? Yes, if you are here for the first time in my best English, put a comment in the live chat. And where are you cycling from? Where are you joining from? Or it's usually the same thing. This is a wonderful community. If people flash up with a little icon of a coloured jersey, it just means they've been around for a long time. And watch out for anyone in a yellow jersey. They've been a member of the community for over a year. So you can join that by just clicking on the tabs. You'll see them all in the shitty YouTube thingy, my jiggy bee thingy, my jiggy bee. Okay. But anyway, you're here for some chat. Are some of you here for to Wednesday's chat? Hmm. Yes. Click that link and you get in the free coaching session. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to say any more about that because I think it's full for this week. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't get in the link. Anyway, if you can't make it this Wednesday, don't worry you will get a recording sent to you Thursday or Friday, but that recording is not available for anyone else. No. So move on fast, coach. Let me just jump in and see who's joining. Dave, hi. Joe, hello. Hugh, great. When you put the ABC 2000, so the ABC, I love that. Do you remember the band ABC? I can't remember some of their songs, uh, but I'm sure they'll come to me. I'm sure it was an 80s band. Anyone help me out with that? Mike, hello, Matt. How are you doing? Stephen Nell, thank you for joining. Steve Dominguez, my hero. John Carson. John, how's the weather up your way? Is it as windy as it is down here? Yes, it is. Coach, very much so. Sonny Wimslow. Dave, I can tell you a few stories about Sonny Wimslow. I know Cheadle Hume very well. It was my halfway point when I used to travel home from down south. I had family that lived in Chiro Hoon and my aunt worked in Wimslow. I'm afraid, Dave, she used to say that's where all the posh people in that area stayed was Wimslow. Thomas Froome, hi, 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 hi. Franz, hi. Miles from uh, Soggy Swindon. 
<laughs> that sounds like a sort of folk band. It's Miles from Soggy Swindon. Take it away, Miles! Miles is another hero of mine, okay? Anyway, let's get dived into the chat, okay? Right, so I want to start things off by talking a little bit about something that you may, may confuse you. And I want to make a disconnect, first of all, with training. And I want to make that disconnect with your personality and your performance. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, the first phase is I want you to understand what is fitness. We've talked about this before. I talk about it is the ability to meet the needs of your environment. Okay, basically function. So what if I told you that, obviously, I, I push longevity of motion. There is a project of mine, something I've been working on for years. And... Most people would say, yeah, but coach, I, I, I want longevity of life. What if I was to say that if we take average age, let's say UK, we, we hit 80 years old, but what about the average age of decline of health? Would you be surprised if I told you it was post 50? So what the fuck's the point of having 30 years from 50 to 80, living a life, sitting in a chair with a fucking remote control for Netflix? Not for me, mister. And it's not for you either, is it? We want to be able to push your emotion. We want to be able to understand. So fitness, think of it in the components of cardiovascular development via the capillary network, capillarization, more and more, because this will impact on the decrease in capillarization, which will lead to cardiovascular diseases. Oxygen is life. We remember that. And we're trying to open up more pathways. And then we've got the extraction of oxygen. You may call it VO2. So will I. But we've got to increase that extraction of oxygen. We've got to develop our skeletal muscle system. Why? Because we're going to decline in lean tissue development. So every so often, okay, the mini skirt will come back into fashion. Flares will come back into fashion. <laughs> Where are you going with this, coach? What does this mean? What I mean is there is a cycle of things in there. Now, in the UK, Rishi Sunak was caught in an interview. He is the prime minister of this country. Uh, if you didn't know that, my, my daughter didn't know that and she lives here. So anyway, but he was caught in a video or an interview wearing a pair of Adidas Samba. So I would say, ha ha ha, that's Adidas Samba's street cred gone. So things go in and out of fashion, don't they? So if you think of fitness, things come in and out of fashion. What doesn't change? Science doesn't change. I've just given you a description of what fitness is. It's not going to change, okay? We talked last week about language and dictionary. So it's not going to change. So when things go, oh, we need to do more threshold. We need to do more zone three. Oh, I've read this article. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, things matter to the individual. What's your favorite color? I can hear you shouting it out. Well, mine is blue. What's your favorite number? What's your favorite meal? We're all different, aren't we? Okay, otherwise we'd all be chasing the same thing. But we have got so many similarities. We are connected. I am you in terms of, I love my bike. Any type of bike. I'll, I'll cycle. I love the freedom. I love the adventure. I love the push. I love the drive. I love the rain, the wind. I love the sun. I love everything about it. I make cognitive connections with everything I do. I'm now 53 years old. So the, the, I don't race. I'll do the odd little put my number on for accountability, but mainly in time trials. I don't do anything other than train hard when I can, when I've got good health, push myself and challenge myself in particular groups that I can get involved in. But mainly, I ride because I can, because I choose to. But I've got longevity based around key things that I do for training. So fitness is those components of capillarization, extract oxygen. So when someone says trends, as in just now, we've got a lot of chat about, hey coach, there's a lot of people doing a lot of zone three work. Is that worthwhile? Well, Yes and no. Anything that comes out of zone two is a key workout. As long as it changes the, let's call it the little glycogen Geiger counter, the glycogen counter. So as soon as you go towards 90, 95, 100% glycogen for your fueling, you change the metabolic response of what the mitochondria is doing. So you can't use fat for fuel. The more fat for fuel we use while we're training, we improve mitochondrial health. Fact. Zone three does not do that. Zone 3 will increase our resistance levels. But remember, what do I call Zone 3? Anyone that's worked with me for a long while, I call it false threshold because that's what it is. And that's what it is for a lot of people. And we can surely develop that. Yeah, we, we can through particular ways. 
about turning on and turning off. Shorter than what most people do. Anyway, I'm not going to share all my little secrets on that and bore you to death. But what I'm getting at is your personality has a disconnect from your performance because that's one example. I'm seeing lots of, hey, there's lots of videos on YouTube now, coach. This is uh, April 2024. Zone three's back in fashion. How can it come back in fashion? Hands up, who watched Paris Roubaix 2024? It happened yesterday. Okay, so maybe you saw clips of it, maybe you saw uh, highlights of it, maybe you're watching this on catch up. You said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was another fastest race uh, of the year, but it had a huge tailwind. Go and have a look at my Strava from Saturday. I had a tailwind in a section and I had. I cycled at 83 kilometres an hour. I think that was 54 miles an hour. And it wasn't on a hilly course. So if a 53-year-old guy could do that with a tailwind, yeah. I mean, for about five seconds, <laughs> they're doing it for a whole, you know, race over 200 kilometres. But the thing is, if we break it up into quarters, okay, so you take my background. So at late 1980s, introduction to sports science. What was at the cutting edge then? Carbohydrate drinks. Oh my God, they were the big thing. Power meters were just coming in on outdoor bikes. They weighed a ton. We're doing VO2 max testing in the lab. Now, fast forward from 1988-89 all the way to today, we've got super light bikes. Who saw Matthew van der Poel caress his bike like a fucking pet dog? Do you think the marketing guys at Canyon are going, hmm, licking their lips? Thank you very much. Could we top Trek domination when Lance Armstrong was winning the Tour de France. Probably not, but the thing is, it's a marketing dream. Now, bikes have developed fantastically well. So has equipment that riders wear, especially helmets, more aerodynamic. Training. There is always advancements in sports science, but nutrition. Over the last decade alone, I have seen phenomenal development in this area. And I was one of the first cohort of riders, especially in the UK, to be drinking these fucking ridiculous uh, carbohydrate drinks. And I remember at the time, a very famous sports scientist who became head of British cycling for a period of time, said, this is the cutting edge. Without taking drugs, this is as close as we can get. And that was on carbohydrate drinks. I mean, come on. Look at what you can buy in a supermarket shelf now. But the new complex carbohydrates that are packed into drinks, giving people up to 100 calories per hour, 100 grams of carbohydrates per hour. These are phenomenal. What was the thing if you watch Paris Roubaix? What happened in the first hour? Lots of guys taking a pee in the men's race, yeah? Yeah, very well hydrated. What about the amount of drinks that came out of team cars? Huge. What's your riding like in terms of nutrition? Mm, yeah, we'll come on to that in a second. But the thing is your personality if it's like mine, you will push, you will chase, you've got a high pain threshold, you enjoy the determination that it requires to complete a hard workout, a hard chain gang, a hard group ride, you love that actually. At the time you don't, but you push yourself. And the thing is, what happens is we make a disconnect because we are pushing when we should be controlling. So I want you to be aware of that as we go into this session. Your personality, your warrior state, okay? And how we need to develop our strategic state. In school, I'll be sharing my full latest DNA test. There is one little glitch that I want to chase up with the guys. This is a company that uses it will test Team GB athletes, etc. Premium athletes. The test itself is not available yet uh, on the market. But I'm going to let you into a little secret. So it's it's thrown up one little anomaly I want to chase up. And it's to do with my skin. It says that I should have fair uh, hair and very light skin. Now, I am Scotland. And it's almost to say, is that just a cheap little joke at the Scottish? But you may not believe this looking at me. But I'm not that light of skin. I go very, very, very dark skin. Uh, so I want to say, where did you get that from? Because I don't want people doing the test and then saying, oh, this doesn't really add up. There is obviously a margin of error with, with all DNA tests, okay? Now, this is a health and fitness DNA test. It's not telling me fucking Darth Vader's my father. It's just measuring capacity and potential, say, for absorptions uh, and fibre type, etc. It's interesting. You'll like it. But be in school and I'll share that. So, personality. 
It can tell whether you're more warrior or more strategist. We're always a bit of both, okay? And you'll know yourself, okay? But we need to be very, very careful that we are not allowing our personality or our ego to dominate, okay? Because it will, it will creep in, maybe on a Tuesday at 2 p.m. It creeps in, something happens then and you become very ego-dominated. And then Thursday at 9 a.m., yeah, it's not too bad, okay? We've got to be consistent and understand it because it's a big thing. Right, so I want you then to take your personality and think of what I call the rule of patience and performance. So in school, I posted that little piece today uh, and in Longevity of Motion, I posted the longer video about patience. The thing about it is, how is your patience? So the, the common question, how long does it take if I do this training for me to get fit? Define fitness, ability to meet the needs of the environment. Can you do that already? Yes, well, you're going to do it better with fitness, but you then need to replace the needs of the environment with, I want to ride a bike for 100 miles. I want to ride a bike for 10 miles. The thing about fitness is, there is no end point. But, but why should there be? There, there is no end point. There's no start point. There's no end point. Everybody has a level of fitness and everybody will progress at different speeds in terms of the way that we train and the way that your body adapts to training. So if you think of all the pathways and all the objections along the way that oxygen can meet from nasal and mouth breathing, okay, through the windpipe, Okay, our trachea, uh, our bronchi, our bronchioles, our alveoli, diffusion into the bloodstream, movement to the through the capillaries into the mitochondria. You know, we've got alveoli, but we've got all sorts of things going on. Some people will have a cardiovascular development much quicker than others. DNA tells us as well that our ability to uh, develop muscle is individual. Some of you may do exercises that you think, wow, I've put muscle on really quick. I've got stronger really quick. I put muscle on in bulk. We are all very unique. And this is to do with our somatotype, our body shape, ecto endo and mesomorph, our, our genes that we've inherited through our parents, grandparents, etc., etc. So there, there are lots of all variations. We tend to fall into a, a, a window of opportunity of exercises that we enjoy. People will then tell you, don't do the things that you like, do the things that you don't like, because that's what you need to improve on. That's pretty much bullshit. Did you know that? Because it is much better to be highly compliant with exercises, understanding that don't let your personality dominate and have this whole rounded approach. Okay, so you're normally drawn into the things that you are good at, and that's why you like them. Okay, so it is about leaning into that more, because... Training is about an overload. We build. We call it base training. How many people think, well, how much base training do you need to do? You do it for the rest of your life. Okay, there is no period that says base is over. Let's go into the hardcore. It's not a fucking room that you're all hanging about in like lemons. Oh, I'm doing all this base training. I've been doing it for five years. When can I go upstairs into the premium VIP? Zone three, zone four. Oh my God, zone five. Have you seen the women in there? <gasps> Right, okay, coach, calm down. Right, you know what I mean, okay? There is no change, there is no end. You keep developing it. Longevity, so we talk about your present goals and your future goals. Longevity of motion. I want you to understand if you improve your metabolic health, you improve your overall health. Now, that means the older we get, the more investment you're making right now into your health pension. Come on. I was 19 years old, 20 years old, and people would be saying, no then, Scott, okay. I have to put my other glasses on for this. No then, Scott, you need to be thinking about your pension. You need to be investing in your pension because in 50 years, oh, Jesus. You know the type, yeah? Well, now I'm 53 years old and my pension's coming very, very quick. How much have you invested into it? Well, it's the same with our health. It's great when we've got it. Love it. When was the last time you didn't have it? Maybe you had a cold, maybe you had a bad back, maybe you broke your wrist, you couldn't ride your bike. You felt like you were going to explode. Okay, so think about that. Okay, patience. How long does it take? What is your patience? And the way to test it, look back over the last week, the last month, 
Look at your touch points. How consistent are they? Is there a pattern to them? Does something kick in if you're not on your bike for two or three days? Do you chase workouts? We know that concept. Never ever chase workouts. Workouts dovetail in around life. So that key thing, and I'm going to do a longer video on this, how do you find more time to train to develop your patience? Your first workout when you can't train, not when you can train. Too many coaches will say to you, when can you train? How many hours can you do? Oh, I can do six hours. No, you can't. Okay, not every week. Some weeks you'll do more, some weeks you'll do less, but we want a consistent pattern. So you should be asking yourself the question, when can I not train? Well, when I'm in my bed, coach, when I'm working, when I'm integrating, integrating? <laughs> when I'm integrating with the family. Now there's a new concept. Hey guys, have you reached 50 and have forgotten how to fucking integrate with your family? I'm not talking about going and visiting your mother-in-law every week, okay? I'm talking about that family time that's really important, okay? So it's about when you can't, then you look at when you can. And if you tell me then, you look at the Mickey Mouse situations, oh, well, I've got to watch TV then, oh, I'm going to be, yeah. I'm watching dog videos on TikTok. There is always time then after that. Build the key pillars of your life and you'll find training's actually easier to then follow. Anyway, patience. Have you got patience for the rest of your days? Understanding that fitness will peak and trough. But if you start to chase it, game over. Okay, never chase. Always just follow your consistent plan. So you should always have the softer and the harder. Whatever zone you want to call that, okay? I can give you five power meters that will probably range in 20 watts. So one person's zone three that you are watching on a Strava screen or Zwift it's not necessarily even compatible with yours. Never be confused by other people's metrics and never chase them. So what about when we actually then rule into the rule of consistency? What separates the pro and you? Consistency. Yes, there is skill level and there's more commitment available in terms of time, but consistency. How consistent are you to what you do? If you don't enjoy getting on your bike at 5 a.m. in the morning, 7 a.m., 6 p.m. If you don't enjoy doing it and haven't got that cognitive connection, then there's going to be no consistency. As soon as you start forcing yourself, you've got to step back and say, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? And never ever just have the answer, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm getting fit for an event. Because they are not strong enough connections to have longevity. Because you want to be doing it for much longer. Okay, let's say you're in a situation, you're a young father, maybe you're in your 30s, you've put on a little bit of weight, you're drinking too much because work's stressing you out, but you've got a little kid, you've got another one on the way. You should be looking at yourself as a role model, not only in your own family, but in the wider community as well. You're a fucking dad, okay? And children are going to look at you and go, oh, dad, you're amazing, even though you're a fat guy. What? I mean, my mind blows up when I, I hear people say, oh, yeah, I just need to lose weight. Uh, well, you've got children. Hmm, okay. So what kind of investment are you making for your health pension for when those kids really need you? Right? So think about the consistency. You should be able to turn up and increase your touch points. Simple little rule. If you can't ride for an hour or an hour and a half, you just break it down. You split sessions 30, 40 minutes. But if you can, you do less touch points, but you do them for a little bit longer. It's not that difficult. And remember, follow the time method. Look at when you can train. Build up that. Okay, what about discipline? So I would say that the two key things that separate the pro from the amateur are consistency and discipline. They're there, follow them. Now their life's a little bit easier because they've got a whole team of people you know, massaging them, making their meals, all this type of thing. Well, you've got work. You've got a interesting boss. You've got relationships, whether they be partners, kids, wider family. You know, you, you've got so many other pressures. And remember, I've told you this before, the workout exists as one fifth, 20% of the whole thing. So people get that confused with, coach, are you talking about 80, 20% rule? That's the way I train anyway, 20% being maximum. No, I'm not talking, I'm talking about life. Pack that 80, 20 into your workouts. 
and pack my workout into an 80-20, but it's a 20 out of 100 because there are four other things that are going to place more stress on you, okay, quite easily. So think about your discipline and that makes that cognitive connection about what you're doing. So the idea of chasing workouts, the idea of mm, zone two, I'm not really getting anywhere with it. Uh, that's because you're not mixing it probably with the right sort of key five, uh, zone five workouts, or you've not got the structure that's allowing you, okay? So I've seen people talk about, hey, if you're only working for a short amount of time, you should have a 50-50 approach. I would say that anybody who's doing two key workouts a week, let's say you're doing two zone five, and those zone fives are packed into 20 minutes, because that's really what the body can absorb in a, in a workout. So they're worked out over an hour. If they're two hours, and then you're doing another two hours and that's zone two and you've got four hours. There's no way I would say to anyone, hey, do a third hard session. It's no way going to be longevity. So you have to drill back sometimes the higher intensity so that you can drill the overload even higher. Are you finding those workouts difficult? Well, that's probably because you're in a catabolic phase and you're not moving into that anabolic phase. And there's a couple of reasons. I gave you a huge big hint at the start when you watch a pro do Paris-Roubaix, what they're doing that you're not doing, okay? So your discipline is super important. And it's not just discipline in short periods of time. You've got to master your craft. How many of you have got a real skilled profession? You know, you've learned your craft. It's your professional work. It's something you're passionate about. How long does it take, okay, for you to really learn that craft? Well, riding a bike is not something that People often say, and I've often, you know, called this phrase out, it's as easy as riding a bike. Well, riding a bike is not easy. Okay, it's easy to go from A to B sort of in a wiggly line, but you've got to also understand that every session is a skill session and you're learning, okay, extra skills on that bike, how to ride it more efficiently. But that discipline, okay, being able to get on, right, that's, that's really, really important, okay? If you've got that commitment and you find that, you know, nine times out of 10, there will be days where you feel really low and demotivated and it may not just be tiredness, okay? There may be other things going on. There may be hormonal changes. There's, there's diet dehydration and there's other stress. But if you've got that ability to do that, for me, it's such a crying shame that you're not being more productive in other areas of life. If you come along on Wednesday and you listen to my chat, and I remember, folks, I'm moving into a new sort of uh, uh, period where I'm going to be sharing more content. So I plan to be live every Wednesday and do a coaching session. Maybe it will move to Thursday. The times will change so everybody can get, get a go. And yes, the, the places will be limited for it. Okay, it's something I want to practice. I am a coach, a real coach and a teacher. That's what I do. It's what I enjoy. I'm passionate about it. And over three decades... I've tried to master my craft and find out what I really enjoy. And what I enjoy is seeing people progress their fitness and drive up their health and engage not only in cycling more, but in the real world, okay? All those problems. Because if you can master a bike and a hard workout, you've, you've no idea what you should be able to achieve in life. You may think I'm, you know, oh, I don't understand that coach. You know, I hate my job. I'm, I'm not in a productive job. It doesn't matter, okay? There is a difference between success and happiness. If you don't know already, I'll teach you, okay? So, can you score your discipline? Are you good on particular periods? Now, what you're trying to do is you become a detective. Look at your consistency, look at your discipline. Are there some days that are easier than others? Hmm? Does it change? You get to a Friday, maybe you're working Monday to Friday, you get to a Friday, you've been commuting all week, you're, you're fatigued, you're tired. Do we need to change the way that your workouts go? Will you work out because you do a group ride maybe at the weekend and everybody, is that the best thing for you? It's maybe the best thing for everybody else, but is it the best thing for you? Do you need to change that? Maybe do that once a fortnight. So you get the social interaction, but you get the discipline of what works for you. There are many things, okay? What we are and what we become are problem solvers. We create solutions for problems and problems will arise every single day. Some of them will feel so massive that you'll think there's no way forward. Okay, I get them every day. I get them just like you. Take a big deep breath. Okay, how am I going to solve this? Right. It's not a jigsaw. 
It's not a piece of Lego with a map that I can build the Millennium Falcon, okay? It's a real problem that I've got to apply a strategy to. And sometimes it's hard, but there is always a solution because if there's not a solution, it's not a problem, folks. So what about, where is longevity in your goal hierarchy? If I asked you now, I've never really thought about it, coach. I've got 12 weeks before my main event. What does goal hierarchy mean? Well, your goal hierarchy is how we prioritise what's important to us on a daily, weekly, monthly, so a short-term, medium-term and long-term basis. Goals are never end points. Goals are stopping points. Refresh, review, okay? We need to develop exit strategies from our goal hierarchy. So people give you all that, oh, you've got to have smart goals and this is easy to do, okay? And I'm not just another guy that's spouting out to you, goals are really important. What I'm saying is the hierarchy changes what's important to us and we need to have this clear focus about being able to be adaptable. But we have to have some form of bait on the hook of life that we're throwing out every day. What the fuck are you getting on your bike for? Got it? But I believe that there's a large... Um, a growing momentum, probably since COVID, when lockdown times, okay, whereby people are unsure, they're, they're confused. They're getting on their bike, they're working out, they're enjoying it. They're looking online for events, challenges. They're going on the internet trying to find these. It's still a little bit confused. And we have lost that understanding that we do it because we enjoy it. The process, the journey, the physical development, we are motivated by this experience, the process of just being physically fit. It almost become taboo to say this. We don't necessarily train now to race. We don't need the validation. At times, I will do an event. I will have a, a go on a, a Strava segment that I have and I can validate where I'm at. But I just love the feeling I can't explain it, coach. I just love the feeling of doing the workout. This is common. And this is the backbone of amateur and professional athletes because that's how they're drawn to the sport. They enjoy that process. So don't feel ashamed if you think, well, oh, I don't really want to race. I go on Zwift and everybody's, I don't really like doing that. You don't have to. Majority of people don't want to. We add it in, we add it out. But you've got to have that longevity. You've got to be thinking about your health. Okay, because remember... Physical exercise is damaging to health. It places us in an overload. It increases uh, exposure to uh, oxidative processes, you know, more free radicals, extra inflammation. It's destructive. But the demands we place on the system, if we're clever, our body is a very clever, much cleverer than any computer, and it will learn to buffer, and it will learn to become adaptive to those harsh conditions that the exercise happens via capillary density increase, extraction of more oxygen, and what we call the flushing or the cleansing of lactic acid at high levels because your mitochondrial is more efficient. And that's its job. It's a strange conundrum. Is it the chicken or the egg? What came first? Mitochondrial efficiency from zone two or mitochondrial efficiency to clear lactic acid at zone four and five? Well, Develop first, push second. Because without them, you will never have that effective threshold. And that's where people get confused. I've said this many times before. A patient presenting pre-diabetic is going to have very high levels of lactic acid at rest. Because the mitochondrial is not doing its job. The mitochondrial as well is it is it no one, you know it from high school science as the power plant. Now, that doesn't mean that Homer Simpson's inside pressing buttons, all sorts. It means that it is the energy release. And at rest, wow, you've got more energy. I don't care if you're 50, 60 or 70. You get it right, you got more energy, okay? So, think about longevity. Where does it exist? So, what I'm saying is if you make that cognitive connection... I'm doing this because I'm improving my health, my resting heart rate's coming down, my capillary network's going up, my HRV is changing, I feel much more refreshed, boom. But if you're training and every single day you're feeling like a, you know, 
I was going to say a bag of rusty spanners, as we say in the west of Scotland. Okay, we say other things as well, but you may not understand them. Then something's not quite right. Remember, we're only as good as what we recover from. So you've got to have this dialogue with yourself. So, personality. Great if you've got that warrior spirit. Bad if you let it control you all the time. Because you'll make bad decisions because you fall into the mantra. No pain, no gain. So the sneaking, the zone two moves to zone three. Yeah, it feels faster. When well, you're finishing fatigue, great, I'm finishing fatigue. But if you've done a 92-hour session, then you've got an eating disorder. Now that, oh my God, coach, you can't say that. I've not got an eating disorder. Well, if you do a 90-minute zone two and you don't need to eat anything, well, I don't feel hungry. Of course you don't. Why don't you feel hungry? Because your body's adaptive. It's search and steady state. So it, it tricks you. When you do that regularly, a week, two weeks, yeah, you fulfill, you, you just end up in that catabolic state. Because too many people, and again, I'll just brush over this, too many people have got a negative, react, negative relationship with calories, okay? It seems to become another word that's a little bit taboo. Everybody's calorie counting. Don't do that. You don't need to do that. You calorie count when you're working out your hourly rate for carbohydrate, okay? So when we go back to Paris-Roubaix, the latest professional race to go on, and you all look at the volume of food, and you see riders opening up foil and eating real food, you'll see some from the get-go having gels. Why is that? Because they've tested and they've, they've monitored their absorption for these particular foods. Remember, in a sliding scale, it should go through three phases. Solid food, then more semi-solid you know, semi into liquid because bloodstream will change, your nervous system changes as we become more fatigued and therefore the gut is under stress from more difficult food to digest. And the, the market nowadays would have you guided towards eating so many sports, nutrition bars, etc. You don't need that. We need food, okay, that releases calories, usually more in a more complex way. So as we get later on down and closer to the finish, Yes, you may need that quick fix with those simple carbon, uh, you know, your fructose and your sucrose, your, your simple gels, I was going to say, okay? But we save that for another video, okay? I've done lots of talk on nutrition. Personality can destroy you and it can make you. Have you got that personality? Is it progressing you? Are you confused about your training? Why? You're only confused because you've got no patience. Stick at it, Okay. Stick at it and always be aware that what has happened before is likely to happen in the future. So, change that, okay? Alter your workouts, maybe alter the days. Start to listen to your body and the other four factors. Nutrition, hydration, stress and sleep. If one of them's getting impacted, then the sleep is the biggest sort of culprit. It's the sort of bag at the end that captures all the shit in life and then it's impacted, okay? So even by simply increasing your consistency and discipline with hydration can make massive changes to people, both on and off the bike. But if you've got that determination to cycle, you've got a determination for life. So why fuck it up? Okay? I mean, look at everything else. Increase your productivity at work. Increase your relationships because your cycling will be so much better. It's win-win. It's so simple. Okay, plenty there. Look, I've rattled on for 40 minutes there. Uh, have I got anything else? I'm not going to push my uh, coaching session on Wednesday, not this week, because I think it's pretty full anyway. Okay, so let me see how much time I've got on. I don't think my camera is... Uh, oh, people have been asking me about my caps. I'll do a little thing in school. I'm going to be doing some competitions, folks. For the kinetic cycling caps. Okay, so watch out for school. I'm going to run some competitions. And I may do may do some giveaways on YouTube uh, next week, folks, as well. So watch out for that. Okay, right. I want to call you out and find out how many people. Come on, like. Hit that like button, folks. All you need to do is go and hit the thumb. Okay, we've only got 42 likes. Come on, 40 minutes. I think I'm 
if you're still on, I've got to ask for your support. Tell YouTube that we're on live and you can hit that like button. Two more people done it just by asking. Is it because people forget? It looks like that, okay? It's a little thumb. Yeah, just reach out. <laughs> okay, I've got some time for some questions, folks. Got about 10 minutes that I can jump on and do some questions just if I get the right screen up. So if you've got a question, you can stick a little hashtag, put your question, and I'll go through it. Let me just jump through. Who have we got? Mark, hi. Jill from Cloudy Cornwall. Hi, Jill. Jan from Canada. Thank you very much. Hey, Wanda. Nice to have you on. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me just get rid of that screen. Hey, folks, if you're on Catch Up or the recorded version and you've got a question, you can come into school and you can post it there. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'm going to look at my big screen. Can you please do a video on testosterone, both natural and take care of replacement for cycling? P.S. Love the show. Thank you, Ken. That's a good question. Is anybody else interested in hormonal responses? Uh, there is a there is a thing I'm following in terms of research, folks, and it's not necessarily on testosterone, but it's on <laughs> the dreaded subject of the menopause. Uh, but this is because I'm interested in some of the responses in terms of hormonal responses. But a study that was done on this, uh, it was from South Africa, but it looked at there was cross behavior with addiction. Can you imagine that? So addiction, you're cycling. Where, where, where's the link coming from addiction? It's to do with behavior. Does anybody remember when I talk about the behavior uh, and then the action and then the outcome? So that sort of triad, that movement, behave, the thought leading to that behavior, leading to the outcome. So if you think about consistency and discipline, what's the thought process that's going through? I need to change zone two into zone three. I need to go a little bit harder today. I need to do this. I can't do this workout today. I'm going to do it and I'll just chase the thought process. And a lot of this comes into our, our own confidence, sometimes our own self-efficacy with herself. Okay. And, and this has a big, big bearing and our hormones, they matter. So especially for testosterone, especially if people, especially guys who are losing or having lower levels of testosterone as we get older. And obviously by, by uh, natural biochemistry, some people have higher testosterone. I almost always remember the famous case of an American sprinter. I won't name his name because he failed a drug test uh, for having high levels of male growth hormone. And he claimed that he had sex just before his race. I mean, what? In the warm-up room, fucking moron, right? It was it was a true story. Yeah, there you go. You can go and Google and see if you can find out who that was. But it was a right real story. But obviously, with uh, testosterone, obviously the benefits that this brings uh, for for muscle development and such, and muscle repair. People often get the confusion between muscle growth and muscle repair. And I'm a big advocate of lean tissue development. I want guys to be over 40, 50%. I want women to be over 20, 30% lean tissue, but I don't want them, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is to do with the relationship between fat, okay? When we lose mass, we lose fat and lean tissue. I want fat to go down, but muscle lean tissue to go up so that our basal metabolic rate changes at rest. This is a healthier way to live our life. And obviously, it's got a big bearing on, on therefore, the natural levels of, of hormones. Sorry, I got carried away there because I love that topic. Okay. New Jersey, witness. Okay. That sounds like a witness from New Jersey. You'll be called to trial. Donald Trump is standing a trial and we're going to bring in witness. He's coming all the way up from New Jersey. Hey, John. Yes, hormonal boosting, please. Yeah. Okay. So John, I'm guessing, yeah, weight training, boom. Anaerobic work, boom. These are these are testosterone, uh, Chris. For Wednesday session, would it be helpful uh, to be riding on Zwift? Wednesday session is not a coaching session, folks. It's not on my bike. It's an actual coaching. I am doing something on Wednesday that I've never done before. I'm going to share my story from start, my foundations in cycling 
and coaching, my introduction to sports science. And then I'm going to take you through a journey that's been 30 years, but I'm doing it very quickly and I'm splitting it into two. So from year 15 out, when I was pronounced dead at the side of the road and how I have then cultivated what I believe an incredibly successful method of training. And I want to share with you how to do that and how to coach yourself. And if you can't coach yourself, there is an opportunity to come and do some sessions uh, and, and, and join a program that I've got. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to master that because this is what I want to do. I want to share. Okay, and I want to show you how to do it. The live workouts, folks, you've got to be in longevity of motion uh, to get them. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Dave, question. Coming back from illness, activation workout or go zone two. Okay, Dave, there's lots of ways of doing this. The simplest way, if you're coming back from any period of illness, okay, you stay zone two, don't activate anything. Say zone two and measure your heart rate. So zone one or zone two. You do a consistent length of time and you try to do it with a sleep placed, okay? So we would do Monday, rest Tuesday. Couple of sleeps, go again Wednesday. Couple of sleeps, go again Friday. Couple of sleeps, go again Sunday. Then what you do in the second week is if we're okay, we then join them together. So what you do is you would do two or three sessions at the same power, exactly the same. And what you're looking for is a decrease in your heart rate. Okay, so you do session one, session two, the next day. So you say you do 30 minutes, you do the next session, 30 minutes, same power, let's call it 120 watts. If the heart rate goes up on the second day, sometimes I, I give you a caveat of maybe three to five. Okay, if it's okay if it, it stays in that, because temperature, if we're training indoors, stays the same or comes down, we go to then step three, you do the third day. However, if it goes up more than five, boom, that's it, game over, you go back to one day, day off, and so on. It can take two weeks, sometimes three, sometimes four, depending on how long you've been off your bike, okay? The activation would come after you're convinced that your body's able to absorb Roughly where you were before with your zone two. It's having the same response in terms of heart rate. Your resting heart rate's the same the next day. And you're feeling okay. The biggest thing about returning from illness is you've got to remember there's a, a sort of deeper intercellular dehydration goes on. You've got to get that right. And your body will deactivate. But you don't need to do activation high spikes to get activation back. You just need to put it into the process of exercising and just actually increasing the, the heart rate. Okay. Let me see where we're at. Uh, Matt, you may miss my question. Did I? Sorry. I'll go back a little bit. Matt, coach, do you really believe uh, is only fueling with carbohydrates? Do I only believe? Did anyone see when I, I mentioned it when he patted his bike? Uh, I've seen some of his uh, training numbers and I've seen uh, the people that, that test them as well. And uh, it is not in my... Uh, cognitive processing to ever doubt any professional athlete. And remember, I've spoken to a lot of athletes who have been involved, athletes that were involved in road with uh, Lance Armstrong in the Tour de France's that he participated in. Well, the whole team was participating in some form of drug, drug taking. In a team of nine, they were split into three teams, A, B and C, with three riders in the A. I'm not going to go through the names, but People who know me well know who I'm talking about. And uh, it was a massive, devastating blow to me when I discovered that they were cheating. So I would say that Matthew's using carbohydrates. He's also using these things. You've probably all seen them. Yes, the company is talking to me and they want me to promote I've got a few questions I need to ask them and I've got a couple of meetings coming up with them, Keto and IQ. So yeah, I want to know exactly, I've seen some of the science and obviously I understand ketones and, and, and obviously how they can preserve carbohydrates and they, they can fuel. So most of the pros, a lot of them are on it, but they're taking them mainly if you speak to them uh, or if you listen to them on recovery. The fueling part is very important. If you watch, uh, so, Matthew van der Poel, you probably look at him and think of him as like a middleweight boxer. He does look like that compared to all the other cyclists, but he's he's very lean. But the thing is, he's more anaerobic than he is aerobic. 
Okay, so that means that he will burn fuel more. And if you watch him closely, compared to where he was two years ago, you'll see him fuel a lot more on the bike, a lot more. Okay, as I say, fueling is probably in the last decade, the biggest invested in terms of science and, and development and products that you've seen. It's that one area that probably moved the ninth rider from the Lance Armstrong days further up. So rather than being, you know, seven, eight and ninth rider on the team, they would now probably be maybe in the top three. But the fitness has gone up for the whole peloton. So it has. But yes, I believe that uh, any rider today is completely clean and taking carbohydrate drinks. Remember, my coach said that these would become illegal in 1989. <laughs> carbohydrate drinking because it was cheating there you go okay la 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 kim how are you i was watching some people climb hills and they snack uphill uh does it make it easier they're, they're snacking while going up the hill depends on how long the hill is but obviously when we're eating or drinking we need to make sure that we've got control of our breathing which means we've got to be in vt1 as soon as we go to vt2 there is a chance that it will go down the wrong way and it'll go into your lungs and you'll start coughing and choking so that's very important okay so hopefully yeah they're very very controlled acos acos cos have i pronounced that right hello from hungary thank you very much from joining from hungary Okay, Jill, yep, lack of them, hormones, yep. Low, closer to the truth than you think. Oh my God, witness, I've got to know more. I've got to know, man, I've got to know. <laughs> Matt, okay, got that. Morey, dropping VO2 workout during the week for fast group ride at the weekend. Yeah, perfect, well done. Okay, smart. We're gonna break through, so what people call a breakthrough workout, I call it, or a key workout, something that takes you above the metabolic response. So for some people, that may just be zone three. That may be a longer zone three type ride. It may be a zone four false threshold. It may be a zone five VO2, or it may be that group ride that you know you're going to go outside your comfort zone, but it becomes both a physical and a psychological booster. Good stuff. We're only as good as what we recover from. So there's no point overloading the system and then breaking down after two weeks and having to have more recovery than riding, okay? In an ideal world, I would never have you off the bike more than two days, okay? Uh, I want to win Cat C Swift races, but I'm closer to the bottom. Well, we just move up one place at a time, okay? Consistency, discipline. Where would you be in a month? I want to know, right? You're never going to get there if you stop. You're only going to get there if you keep going. Every day is a school day, every day is a learning day. So have a go, just keep turning up. And what are you learning? If you repeat the same thing, you won't progress, okay? So make sure you go into those races well warmed up. Remember, the warm up is absolutely crucial and far too many people, especially doing Zwift races, spend 10 minutes doing a little spin. That is not a warm up, that is a workout warm up potentially, as long as you've got activation periods at the start. If you're going to race for, say, 40 minutes, you need to warm up for 40 minutes or 60 minutes, okay? Any race under an hour needs a one-to-one -one style ratio of warm-up. And if you want to push your heart rate up so that the, the first phase of the race is feels a little bit easier, you need to hit that threshold heart rate usually with about 12 minutes to go, okay? That is an old rule, 12 to 20 minutes, the start so you would do your warm-up boom 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 hit around about that threshold heart rate or in that zone with about 12 to 20 minutes to go before the start you wind down wind down ready for the start of the race and this will help with activation okay let me see let me see uh, I'm looking for those cues folks I don't want to be calling out folk are answering things that are not questions uh, it's like that you know do you remember? I was going to say something a bit stupid there. Forget it. It was about sex education, being in school, and the teacher says, put your hand up if you've got a question. And you're 12 years old. Who the fuck's got a question? Yeah, there's always one kid. <laughs> Everybody's looking at the floor. I'm looking at the screen. Everybody's like, oh, is he going to ask, is he going to ask me out? Wanda, coach, did you see Franz? Question. I've missed it. Thanks, Wanda. 
Francis actually then having a go. There it is. That there. Hi, coach. Do you believe in breathing drills off the bike? Yes. Have you not seen me do them? Could we do another video on that? I do them all the time. I've done them since I was a young boy. Swimming underwater. That was one of the first things I was exposed to. I fell in love with the big blue. So from a very young age, I was always a little bit of a hippie. So breathing drills very important to me. 18 years old, I had my lung capacity measured in the lab and it was huge, very big. So I realized, ah, I've got something here. I always felt that when I was younger and I was training, that I would get fit, fitter very quick at this big lung capacity. So my breathing and then understanding about diffusion and alveoli. So I used to do exercises that I first saw an actor do. A guy called Paul Newman, Sundance Kid, or Butch Cassidy. He was Butch, wasn't he? Head in a bucket of cold water, holding his breath. So I started then to look, and that's why I've got a big fascination and why the Longevity of Motion course has a big section on cold water treatment. I know that there is more uh, bigger names and gurus who promote this more and it's become their thing. It's not true. I was doing cold water bathing in the 1980s. We were experimenting with it in terms of recovery and pushing blood flow to the core and the belly of the muscle. Hot and cold treatments as well to increase circulation around particular joints for recovery after exercise as well. What we call uh, vasal and vasodilation and vasal constriction of the blood vessel. Yeah, you've probably had it. You, a physiotherapist probably done it or hot cold treatment with an ice pack and a hot water bottle. You can do exactly the same. You don't need a big massage gun. Do, do, do. Try hot cold next time. Okay, so yes, breathing drills. So we do breathing drills on the bike where we breathe in. I do nasal in, mouth out. I've done that in terms of the determination of VT1 to VT2 when we're singing. Yeah, if you can sing the chorus of your favourite song, you're in VT1 while exercising because you're not producing carbon dioxide that needs to be exhaled. So breathing, remember, is all about deep breath in, through the nose, warm, moisten, and it's a bigger pathway than the mouth. Then it's the breathing out. That's where people get it wrong because we've got to remove carbon dioxide. Remember, VT1 to 2 is a detection of increase in Carbon dioxide. Okay, so that's what stimulates the heart, etc., to go up. It's carbon dioxide. So if you think, well, I'm doing zone two, but I've got a really high heart rate, you're probably <laughs> breathing like a spring of spaniel. Big breaths out, okay, and big breaths out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw in a little video again of them. Yeah, concentrate on that, Franz. Do a little live workout. I'm gonna write that down. I'll note it. Hey, blah blah blah. Let me see what we got. Tom. Hi, Tom. Have you heard of U2s where the streets have no name? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that a sort of song that was uh, aimed at pissed off postmen uh, where the streets have no name and they just threw the letters in the gardens? Bono's son has now grown up and he's got his own band, hasn't he? My daughter was saying she's going to watch and I was like, oh my God, Bono, he's got old then again. Uh, trying on a bike. A bike and his rider can be a powerful thing. My bike defies gravity. I love that. You've heard me talk about the the flow state, and I talk a lot about flow state, and when we're in that flow state, whether it be at work, whether it be on a workout, it's, it's something that's very, very powerful. And I talk about the bike, and when we're in flow state. I suppose the best professional nowadays, you probably all agree, somebody like a Tom Pitcock, you know, in the downhill with the bike and him become one. Well, when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, we had lots of role models like that, where the bike and them just glow, it flowed beautifully. So when you're doing high speed, the bike flows, okay? You become one with the bike. The famous Miguel Indurain used to talk about him and the bike when he was doing his time trials. Him and the bike are just one. Don't fight the bike. Let the bike work with you. I mean, I could talk to you all day about the, the relationship between the human being and the bike as a bike fitter and how we wrap ourselves around the bike. Remember, the bike will flow without you on it. If it does eight miles an hour and more, it's got perfect balance. It'll keep going, okay? But when we climb on it with our disjointed stability through our hip, our one leg more dominant than the other, we send the bike all over the place. <laughs> the bike itself. It's perfectly formed to go all by itself. Okay. Hey, Owen, thank you very much. 
is recovering from shingles any worse than any other virus in terms of returning to training? That's a difficult one to answer, Owen. That's a, that's a tough one because, again, in shingles, there can be, oh, there can be some horrendous uh, exposure to that virus. And depending on what nerve it grabs and, you know, exposes you to, you know, all sorts of difficulties. But a virus is a virus. And you'll be given, obviously, the green light by your doctor, but it will have an effect. It'll have an effect on your nervous system as well. So therefore, that's connected to your heart rate. So when you start to train, you'll probably see an elevated heart rate for maybe a week or maybe even more. I want to share in school, again, this is another video I'll do from Saturday when I rode into the headwind and all such, but I was taking a medication for block sinuses or an infection which had a small amount of steroid my heart rate was through the roof. It was almost hilarious. I almost ripped my heart rate monitor off. But I thought, I'll save that and then I'll share the workout. And I'll share it against something that's got a sort of similar loading. And you'll see the difference. It was, uh, yeah, it was hard going. With that high heart rate, yeah, it had an effect. But it had an effect on my mind. But then, so, oh, and I can't give you an answer to that because the thing with shingles is, it can last a long time and it can be dormant as well. And you've probably been told all this by your consultant or your or your health practitioner. Uh, so, yeah, please, please be careful. Seek expert advice. But remember, you've got health metrics all the time. Resting heart rate is one of the best health metrics we can take. That's for everybody. Know where your range is. OK, know where your range is. And as soon as you see a rise of five beats or more, something's not right. OK. Generally, it just means you're a little bit more catabolic and you need a bit more recovery, okay? But monitor that resting heart rate. Stephen, hi. I never eat when doing zone two rides, one to two, one hours to two. Always worried about interfering with my weight loss. Am I stupid? Yes, Stephen, completely. Be the reason being is because your body seeks that homeostasis, that steady state. So it tells you you're not hungry, but you're exercising to get fitter. So why would you not exercise to fuel the body to remove itself out of catabolic? Sure, if you're doing very good zone two and you're working between zone one and zone two, remember zone two exists probably about the middle where fat max is, but fat max is only ever going to be 40 to 50% of fat for fuel. You still need carbohydrate. So when we run low on carbohydrate, this will affect hormone, hormone release. This will affect your mood. This will affect your body's ability, okay, to produce energy. So guess where it goes to? doesn't go to your fat, it goes to your proteins. So you can be in effect very catabolic. That sounds like cannibalism. It sounds like, yeah, catastrophe. Because many people can find themselves actually trying to produce energy, the body working hard to take it from proteins. The very thing you're trying to develop because you're looking to develop lean tissue. Stephen, I would say to you right now, if you haven't got a set of digital scales that measure fat and lean tissue, that's the next bike product. Don't think about wheels, helmet, new shoes, think about a set of digital scales. So rather than lose mass, you should be trying to interfere with the fat and muscle relationship. You want to have the muscle higher than the fat. Okay, for many people, it's the other way around. So if fat's higher than muscle and you lose mass, great, you lose weight, but you're not interfering with your basal metabolic rate. So you're going to return to putting weight on much quicker, right? I know that sounds harsh, but it's true. You want to be exercising and just using fuel that allows you healthy nutrients. Not all calories are the same, okay? Have I ever told you the story? I'll save it for my chat on Wednesday when I removed a bar of chocolate from a rider just before a championship race. Commonwealth Games. <laughs> And I thought, oh my God, I've not taught them anything, okay? That's an example of not good calories, okay? So calories that you want when you're on your bike are complex carbohydrates. Not simple carbon chains, not your fructose, maltose, sucrose, more complex, okay? I've got, I don't like promoting any products, but I've, I've, I've got a particular uh, brand behind me. If I was to itch myself, I would be doing something. <laughs> that brand, okay? <laughs> okay, folks, I think we've come to the end of time. One hour or so we've been on. Everybody okay? Thank you very much. 
I'm going to go back in and check and see if you've hit that thumbs up button. I'm giving you a chance now to hit it. Come on, only 77. Hit that thumbs up button. Okay, you need to hit it. Okay, folks. Right, I would like to say thank you for joining me on the live. I've got lots more coming up. And if you are interested, like the guys have done tonight, and talking about hormones, talking about various uh, zones, just tap into school or send me a message, topics you would like to see me cover. So you take care, stay safe. May see some of you on Wednesday. And I'll definitely see some of you in school. And I'll see my team, clan, the brigade, the warriors, okay? in loom again uh, well i say loom i mean longevity of motion okay take care folks thank you very much